I found nine of the best entry level remote jobs hiring with no experience. And I can almost guarantee you that most of these you've never heard of. And most of them are going to be high paying, easy to get into and don't require a college degree. And if you're thinking that's not possible, many other people on this channel have been in the same exact situation that you are in right now. And they had the same doubts and they made it happen. Like Josh, for instance, who is a depressed and stressed engineering student who was working and studying nearly 100 hours a week. But then he discovered online that he can land a remote job that does not require experience or a college degree. So he immediately dropped out of his engineering program and he was able to land a $70,000 a year remote job right off the bat. And if you watch until the end and really pay attention to the video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do it as well. So if you appreciate me making these types of videos, let me know by gently cheersing the like button. And let's jump into it right now with number one on the list, which is going to be a telescribe. And this is basically where you document patient visits and you communicate with healthcare providers during patient visits. And funny enough, the concept of medical scribes can be traced back to ancient civilizations ones such as Egypt, Greece, or Mesopotamia. And in these societies, physicians relied on skilled assistants to transcribe medical texts, as well as recording observations and documenting treatments. And telescribes make about $38,000 to $56,000 a year, so it's pretty decent money, especially for an entry-level job. And this can be a really good job to get if you're already going to school to become some other medical professional, or if you want to go into a different medical job down the line. For instance, if you want to become a medical transcriptionist, you can make about $42,000 to $70,000 a year, year, this would be a good job to go into after this. Medical administrative assistants make $38,000 to $53,000 a year, and virtual medical assistants make $40,000 to $58,000 a year. So yeah, this is another one of those really good medical careers that are relatively easy to get into, very stable, and they pay okay too. So overall, this one's pretty good. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be a virtual setter, and this is basically where you schedule appointments and handle customer communication virtually. And basically, your responsibility is to either handle inbound leads or find outbound leads and then get those people on an actual appointment, aka a sales call with someone who is going to basically sell them a product. Here's a video of a guy who does this professionally. He talks about the day in the life of an appointment setter. And appointment setters make anywhere from $45 to $70,000 a year on average. You can also go into a scheduler manager position. They make about $56 to $91,000 a year. And you can make it all the way up to a senior principal scheduler and they make $158 to $282,000 a year. So there is a really nice career path progression here. Another similar career would be a sales development representative. They make about $63 to $99,000 a year. And they do very similar things, but they typically work in the technology industry. And a lot of the time, specifically, they work in software. And this is a really good career path, one of my favorite sales careers. And if you want to know more about it and you want to know how to get into it and the different types of sales careers involved in this, then there's actually a free training, which I'll put down in the description in the pinned comment below that in my opinion is the best way to get into a sales job. So definitely check that out. But yeah, virtual setter, pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and give it an 8.5 out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be a leasing agent. And this is kind of like being a matchmaker, except instead of matching up couples, you're matching people with their perfect apartments. So basically you're finding and signing tenants to different rental properties, but not just any rental property you're finding one that is really good for them. It's exactly what they want. And a fun fact here is the concept of renting or leasing dates back over 4,000 years, where clay tablets documented the leasing of land in ancient Sumeria. Now, you might think you probably have to have some real estate experience in order to get into this. Well, you know, according to people on Reddit who are actually in subreddits regarding this, this person, Early Green 311 says, came here to say this, there's literally zero experience or education required to be a leasing agent. So you absolutely do not have to have any experience or education in order to do this. And you can make about forty-four to $69,000 a year. So it pays pretty well. And there's a robust career path ahead of you. So senior leasing agents can make fifty-seven dollars to $95,000 a year. That's typically after about two to four years of experience. Head leasing agents can make sixty-seven dollars to $116,000 a year. And lead leasing agents can make seventy-two dollars to $124,000 a year. Plus, there's a lot of related careers within real estate that you can always go into, such as property manager. They make about forty-four dollars to $72,000. And real estate agent, which makes about ninety-two dollars to $171,000. So yeah, leasing agent, really good. Lots of opportunity in the real estate industry. I'm going to go ahead and give this one an 8.5 out of 10 opportunity score as well. Next, let's talk about a website copywriter. And this is basically where you craft words that make websites come alive. And this causes them to captivate the audiences that are on them. And basically, you're going to be writing engaging and effective digital content on various different platforms. And the term copywriter dates back to the 1800s, where it was used to describe people who produced advertisements and promotional materials for newspapers 
newspapers. And web copywriters make $44,000 to $73,000 a year. And that also has a robust career path where you can either work for a company, you know, as an employee, or you can start your own business, or you could be a freelancer. So there's a lot of options for you. For instance, copywriting managers make about $69,000 to $120,000 a year. And there are freelance copywriters and people who own their own copywriting businesses that make millions of dollars a year. But of course, you have to get very, very good in order to get to that level. And the skills that you learn from copywriting are useful in all kinds of other endeavors. So if you ever wanted to start a YouTube channel, which I know a lot of people do based on the surveys I've done on my channel, copywriting could be a really good career for you to go into. And by the way, if you are interested in starting a YouTube channel, I do have free training on exactly how you can do that in the pinned comment and the description down below. And I'm even doing a live training Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. You can click down there to see if that's still valid. It should probably still be valid by the time you see this, but definitely click down there to check it out. And I'll be answering any questions you have and revealing exactly how I grew this channel to multiple six figures per month. So yeah, really like this one. I'm going to go ahead and give it a nine out of 10 opportunity score. Next is a home and auto insurance producer. And this is somebody who connects clients with essential insurance coverage. And this ensures that they're protected from potential risks. And insurance producers make about 55 to $96,000 a year. And some career paths that are similar to this would be an insurance sales agent. They make about 61 to $112,000 a year. And an insurance broker or manager, they make about 89 to $166,000 a year. So there's other career paths you can go into that are similar. Now, while no degree is required, you do have to get an insurance license. And usually they'll actually hire you and then you have 30 days to get the license. And this involves passing a state exam. It's not that hard though, because it only takes a month to do it. But yeah, overall, really good one. I'm gonna go ahead and give this one an eight out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be admin staff. And this is somebody who provides administrative and secretarial support, manages schedules and solves administrative issues. And they make about 42 to $73,000 a year, which is pretty good, especially considering you don't need a college degree, previous experience, et cetera, to land this position. And there's some other positions you can also go into, such as office manager, they make 47 to $73,000 a year, and executive assistant, they make about 53 to $84,000 a year. So yeah, another one that you could definitely look into, especially if you're into organizing things and being in control of scheduling. I will say that the career path is a bit limited here. Um, you know, it pays decently well right off the bat, but there's not a lot of other careers you can go into very easily. So for that reason, I'll give this one a seven out of 10 opportunity score. Next is going to be a credit and collections analyst. And basically you're gonna manage the credit and collections collections process, ensuring payments are timely and risks are minimized. Now, collections agents do get kind of a bad rap. You know, basically people visualize them as these people that just, you know, call constantly and they hound people in order to get them to pay back their debts, but it's not always that bad. In fact, sometimes depending on the company that you work for, a lot of the time it's more collaborative because you can actually save them a bunch of money as well. And it's more about coming to a good middle ground between the company and the person who owes the debt. For instance, this person right here says, I worked in collections and help countless people get out of collections while improving their credit, ask me anything. And they basically said they actually love their job and they never compromise their integrity. And credit collections analysts make about 48 to $70,000 a year. So this is one of those jobs that pays relatively well and it does not require a college degree or previous experience to get into. So this is a really good job to get your foot in the door when it comes to getting your first remote or work from home job. And then down the line, you could probably move into something better. But with that being said, there are some pretty good careers that you can move into even in this line of work. So credit analysts, they make about 68 to 119 thousand dollars a year senior credit information technology analysts make about 82 to 135 thousand dollars a year and a high level credit analyst makes about 111 to 159 thousand dollars a year so you can move into positions that make a good amount of money you know finance and debt as much as the system's messed up it also does make the world go round it is extremely useful when it's done correctly so there's a lot of opportunities in the industry so yeah i'll give this one a solid eight out of ten opportunity score next is a membership coordinator this is where basically you're the vital link between an organization and the members of an organization and you're going to be managing membership applications renewals and communication to ensure a smooth membership experience. So you can almost think of yourself as the glue that keeps the membership community stuck together. And they make about 46 to $63,000 a year. So yeah, this one's pretty solid. Um, doesn't have a robust career path for you to go into, but it does pay relatively well right off the bat doesn't typically require a college degree or previous experience to get into it. Relatively easy to find as well. So I'll give this one a seven out of 10 opportunity score. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, share it with a friend. Also comment below which ones you liked, which ones you didn't like, and which ones maybe I should have included in the video, but I didn't. And there's a good chance they'll make it into a future video. Or if you comment one that's even in this video, maybe I'll do an entire dedicated video to it. 
Next is gonna be a patient services representative. This is where you greet patients, manage their information, and handle inquiries. And the best thing is, most companies are actually just willing to train you, even if you have zero experience or a college degree. And here's a video of the day in the life of a patient services representative. You could check it out. And in this position, you make about thirty-seven dollars to $49,000 a year. So it doesn't pay too well, but it is really easy to get into, and it can lead to higher paying jobs in the medical field. For instance, senior service representatives make forty-eight dollars to $71,000 a year, and service representatives representative managers make $52 to $81,000 a year. So yeah, it's relatively good. I'll go ahead and give this one a 7.5 out of 10 opportunity score. And by the way, if you haven't done it already, check out this video, these seven remote jobs that are almost always hiring, and you can check that out by clicking right here.